Hey everyone, it's Tutorial Tuesday, and this week I want to show you guys how to make a mug. Uh, I think that that's one of the trickier things that um, people do with their Cricut because the, the mugs usually have more of a curved surface, which makes it a little trickier when applying. So I'm just going to walk you through the project um, beginning to end uh, so that you guys can see how I do it. So I'm going to move this a little. I grabbed a mug at the dollar store right here and what I do first I have the Cricut measuring tape and what I like to do first is I kind of wrap it around my mug now you can see I could go pretty big with this but when I hit that curve on the mug that's when I'm gonna start having some trouble so I like to keep it from just hitting that curve so I'm going to do about three and a half inches by, let's see, um, about three and a half inches. I think that that is going to be a great size. So the first thing I like to do after I measure, and I always measure my mugs because they always are different. Uh, and if you've never watched one of my videos before and you're having trouble seeing the mouse, just look for that. That's where it is. Okay, so now that I measured my mug, I'm going to go over to my shapes and I'm going to select a square. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to unlock our dimensions here. Um, nope, I don't need to do that because we're using a perfect square. I'm just going to set it to three and a half. Um, that is going to be my guide for sizing this um, I'm not going to go any bigger than three and a half by three and a half um, so because I put my um, my images up on here first my square is on the top so I'm going to go up here to arrange and I'm going to move it to the back now you can always look at your image here and say oh it's a little wider but I like to put it on here and make sure that overall the dimensions aren't too far off. Uh, I'm going to make this a tiny bit bigger. There we go. And I'm going to set it to the side. And I really, um, I want to show you guys how to do one color and then how to do two colors. So for this one, I'm going to go up here to the ungroup button and I'm going to get rid of these leaves. I don't really, um, I don't really want them on there and it will just give us one color to start with. And I'm just going to put it up here and I'm going to double check my dimensions up here. It's 3.39 and I always try to go just a tiny bit um, smaller than the three and a half inch width because I know I have a good amount. It's because I'm worried when I hit that curve. So this is good to me. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to hide my square now that I don't need it anymore. And what I'm going to do is these are really cute images from Design Space. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys how, because um, I inserted them before I started showing you guys. So I want to show you guys how you can find out the image um, name and cartridge and all of that. We're going to go right over here in our layers panel to the color. And we're going to go to see image information. And that's going to tell me that I used the image fall is in the air M. 3D 28161 and if I wanted to view other images on the cartridge I could push view cartridge and it would bring them all up. Now for the talk turkey to me I'll select do the same process and it says talk turkey to me M3D 2ABE7 and again I could view the cartridge. So now I am going to use this little feature over here called Color Sync. I really like that when working with projects like this where I want to cut multiple different designs using the same color. That way I don't have to recut and waste my vinyl. This is the easiest um, way. So what I'm going to do is my fall is in the air. I want it to be the same color as my um, the word turkey and the outside of the turkey. So right over here. I can just drag it and drop it and now they're the same color. Um, that is the easiest way, especially when they're close to the same color brown. It's easier to do the color sync. So I'm going to go to make it. And the first thing that I like to do is look through and see what color mats are going, to what order the mats are going to cut in. 
I'm gonna go down to mat six. I always start with my smallest mat first, or my last mat um, first, because what I like to do is I like to cut all of my vinyl pieces and lay them in a pile so I can easily grab them as I'm going. And I like to put the red on the bottom. Now, because it's such a small, you can see it's such a small little piece, I'm not going to even cut off a piece of vinyl. Um, I'll cut it after it's the Cricut cuts it. So then I need some orange. So again, I'm just going to line, um, go through quickly and I'm going to line up um, my stuff here. Make sure all of my pieces are big enough. I've, I'm using, I always use my scraps first. Um, that way I know um, I'm getting rid of all my scraps before I cut a nice new piece. And I've seen a lot of people talk about how they don't know which mat is going to cut first. Now, you see mat one, obviously you would think that would cut first, but since I have mat two selected right now, when I go over here and click continue, you'll notice that mat two is still the first one selected. That's what's going to cut first. I'm gonna go up here and pick up my air two. And while that connects, I'm just gonna hit mat one and you can see how that's the one selected now, so that's the one that's going to cut first. Uh, I'm using all vinyl, so because I have the Air 2, I'm going to switch my dial around to vinyl, and then I'm going to use my green mat, and I'm going to load the white first. Now, even though I made my pile, I... Um, I always double check what's on my screen. Sometimes I have accidentally bumped it. Sometimes my kids have hit it. So I always um, double check my screen before I cut just to be on the safe side. So as always, I'm going to uh, push my mat a little bit as I'm loading it and I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting. And while that's cutting, I wanna uh, prep my mug. So I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to wipe it down with just a little bit of alcohol. I have some alcohol from the dollar store I think I got it from and I'm just going to take my napkin here, pour a little bit on my napkin and I like to rub it all over. Even though I'm going to go outside of where I know my design will be. I always like to do it all over just in case my design ends up, I place it a little differently than I envisioned once it's off my mat. Um, so I like to just rub it down and then I set it aside and let it dry. So now I'm gonna go on to my next color. Again, I'm going to double check my screen, make sure that the black is the next color like I have in my pile. And I'm just gonna pull my vinyl off. And then I'm going to put the black down and I'm going to continue cutting the rest of this off screen. And when we come back, I'm going to uh, weed it and then we'll apply. Okay, now that I have all of my stuff cut, uh, I weeded most of my design off camera since most of you know how to weed. But for those of you that don't, I saved a little um, piece here. I saved the bigger piece of my design um, from the brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Cricut True Control knife and my Cricut ruler, and I'm going to cut it off. Now, what I like to do for the biggest part of my design always is I like to make sure that I get a really, really straight cut on that and on my transfer tape. That way, when I'm going to line it up on my mug, I find it just that much easier to get everything straight. Now you could have used registration marks to line everything up, and I will put a link to my um, registration mark video in the description of this one in case you do wanna do that, or if you don't know what registration marks are, you can check that out. Um, but I, nine times out of 10, like to wing it, especially so I don't waste vinyl. So in this case, I'm just gonna show you how I do that. And you can watch the video on registration marks to see if that's something you would prefer. Now, you may have noticed the mat that I'm cutting on. It's my Cricut self-healing mat. So when I make all these cuts into it, it's not damaging my surface. So that's why I'm cutting on here. Cause otherwise, uh, if I lifted this up, you could see all the cuts I've made into my table. So what I'm gonna do here is, because I 
I used um, a new piece of, well, I used a scrap piece of vinyl, but it was still newer. So the edges here and here and here and here, because I cut this with my uh, ruler, I know they're perfectly straight. So for that, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and weed this design. Now, for those of you who haven't weeded before, I like to usually um, do a little, I pull from like the corner here, and then I'll usually just kind of carefully pull uh, around, especially with a more intricate design. You wanna go really slowly, and you wanna go from the top to the sides, um, because you have all different um, sections to this design that are going to um, you got to go around so you want to make sure you're pulling everything up together and not apart now sometimes I'll weed out the centers of my design first and then I put the excess vinyl that I weed out onto my design but because this design didn't really have a lot of you know this is where I would have put it over here but because that um, doesn't have a lot I like to just leave a sticky piece here and then I'll pull out um, my pieces from the inside here. And I'll just stick them onto the sticky vinyl. Um, so that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna go ahead and weed the rest of my design. And then I um, I cut my transfer tape already. So, uh, or well actually I have a piece of transfer tape that I normally use for mugs um, because I usually do the same I buy my mugs from the same place so they're about the same size every time so I just have a piece that I like to keep using until it's no longer usable um, I've had this one though for a pretty long time so once that it's no longer usable I will just um, line up my old piece and just recut around it that way it's still the same size I like working um, with the same size. I know that it is exactly what I want. So um, I am not going to cut it for you, but I will show it to you in a moment. So now see for this one, it's, you, you can see here, I do have some space up here. Um, now, oh, down here too. Now I can cut, I can just take my scissors quickly and I can just cut this little scrap piece off. I save every piece of vinyl. Um, I don't know what I'll ever do with that, but you never know. That's why I save it. So I'll show you guys. Um, let me see if I can do it up close. I can just pull this little piece out here and I'll just stick it to the vinyl over here that I'm not saving. Again, with this little piece here. Um, instead of, you know, that way I can weed the smaller pieces. If it's got a lot of little smaller pieces I like to usually do that at the beginning but it's up to you what order you weed in if you take all the outside excess vinyl off first if you weed the insides of your vinyl um, it's up to you I'm gonna go ahead and do this so I can see some of those tinier pieces in there and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it all off um, hard for me to see. I'm going to pull it up here so I have better light. Um, let's see. All right. This is a little better. Um, now, because we are layering this, uh, like I said, you could have done registration marks. I usually, I just eyeball it nine times out of ten. So it's really up to you if you want to use the registration marks. Um, this particular image that I chose, which is why I chose it, it doesn't have precise um, layering. It's kind of like a knockout method layering. So it's really going to be much easier to lay those pieces down. So that's why I chose this image too, because it's going to be a little easier to layer when you eyeball it. And that's what I wanted you guys to be able to see. Now there are two ways that you can layer and you can do it all on your transfer tape and then put it all in your image or you can do it um, piece by piece. Now, when I do 
a image that is layering on top of each other. I like to do my, um, I like to do it layer by layer. But when you're doing it uh, piece by piece, kind of like we are, I go ahead and I will just do it all on my transfer tape. So I'm gonna show you guys that today. Now what I like to do, um, I'm gonna just do, I'm actually gonna wipe the rest of this with alcohol. Um, I still have some on my napkin here. I'm gonna just do both sides of this mug to show you guys so we don't use two mugs. Now what I like to do first is I'm right-handed, so I know I'll hold my mug like this so that means I'm going to put my design on this side so it's facing away from me. So I like to determine that first. I have my Cricut brayer, and I love to use that as um, a stand. It works perfectly, and that's what I really like. So now I'll show you my, my transfer tape. You can see I'm easier for you guys to see here. It's a straight, um, you can't see it, uh, up here still harder for you to see but it's a straight line um, so it's going to make it easier for me to line it up now what I like to do first is put my design on top of my transfer tape to make sure which way it's going to fit the best um, sometimes I know that I, I try to do a three and a half by three and a half but sometimes I go a little outside of that so I like to double check before I try to apply my transfer tape so I'm just going to peel back a corner of that and I'm going to lay my design down and I like to do it corner I like to line it up exactly now the Cricut transfer tape is great because it does have the grid lines on it so it does make it a little bit easier but um, I like to do this too just because I really can't see straight so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to burnish well from the front and then I'm going to burnish well from the back. And then I'm going to peel my paper from my vinyl. I find that that works much better. Now you can see the little dot for my iden stick. I have long fingernails, so I usually just kind of scrape it down. Uh, you can use your scraper or whatever you're using. Um, and just attach it. Sometimes that happens, especially with the smaller dots or the thinner lines. So you can just carefully peel it back at an angle. And then what I'm going to do is, because this is all one design, I'm just going to um, try and line the straight top of my transfer tape with the straight top of the mug. And I want it to be a little more centered on my mug. Move it down a little. And I'm just gonna put it down and wrap it around and because we didn't do it too much on the curve it's going to be really easy and I also see I missed a piece when I weed uh, when I was weeding so I'll grab that after but I'm gonna go ahead and just scrape this down really well if you um, this is what's going to really pre help prevent your air bubbles is to scrape it down really well now I'm going to peel from a corner it doesn't matter if you do top or bottom um, I'm just gonna do this and done and I'm gonna go back really quickly I'm gonna get that little piece that I forgot to weed out um, the longer you let this cure the harder that's gonna be to take off without damaging the rest of your design but see how cute so now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side because um, I touched my hands all over it I'm gonna quickly do this um, get the grease from my hands off so now what I'm going to do is, because I'm layering, I like to keep my um, computer off to the side with my design on it so I can see exactly how everything is lining up. Now what I want to do is kind of um, place my design together. It's not perfect, but I want to just know how it's going to go on my transfer tape like this so that I can go ahead and I'm going to... Um, I can see that I'm going to line this side up with this um, second line in from the left. That, um, that way I know I have enough room for my whole design. Now, like I said, sometimes I will um, I'll place one layer down at a time, but because I'm not layering on top of each other and I'm not too worried about the air bubbles, I'm just going to... Uh, 
layer it all on my transfer tape and transfer it all as one. Uh, I find that to be easier, especially when you have a design that kind of interlocks this way. That way I'm not uh, making it too far off uh, on one area. I don't want to put it too far to the left or too far to the right. So putting it all on my transfer tape to begin with is going to make that much easier for me. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna pull this whole piece of transfer tape off my backing, so it's going to make it easier for me to line up. Now like I told you guys, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, I can see how this, the turkey lettering fits into the turkey itself here. And then I'm going to move it around the actual image of the turkey. Um, this is where registration marks would come in to help you a little bit more, um, but I just kind of eyeball it. It's a little too much. Um, I can see that around the turkey's head, it's a little close and not perfectly lined up. So I'm just going to kind of play around with it until I think it looks good. I actually cut a little bit of the turkey's head off it looks like when I trimmed my vinyl down so all right this looks good to me so again I'm going to burnish front back and then I'm going to peel my transfer uh, my paper from my transfer tape uh, I still have some pieces stuck so I'm going to um, I'm just going to scrape again and sometimes it helps too if you pull from a different angle sometimes it sticks better in one spot so if you pull from a different angle that can help too and then I just kind of like to twist it around here and Go ahead and do that. Now the rest of the pieces for my turkey are really my turkey's face. So I'm going to add those afterwards. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to line the top of my, uh, my transfer tape with the top of the mug. And I'm just going to kind of lay it down. I'm going to burnish well. And uh, sometimes you'll still get a few bubbles, but you can, once you take your transfer tape off, you can um, kind of smooth them out a little bit. I find it's much more forgiving on a mug than um, some other surfaces. And then we're just gonna peel this off. I'm gonna hold it up for you guys so you can see. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm gonna just take my little pieces and I'm looking at my screen to get an idea of how everything's going to go. I'm just going to, I just have little tiny pieces, so I'm just going to put it up in the corner. I like to not leave too much transfer tape around because that it sticks too much to the mug and you don't really want that. You want it to, um, you want to just make sure you're getting your piece on. So you don't want too much of the excess vinyl sticking to your mug. That's where you're going to get yourself in some trouble. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to layer these pieces up. And again, I'm looking at my computer screen at the design to see where the layers go. And that really helps um, to make sure I'm lining everything up correctly. Uh, but again, if you use registration marks, you don't really have to do that because it's all going to really fall together for you. So I'm going to go ahead and put this layer down. And then um, I've got my eyes. And then this little guy is cute. You can just layer it all on top. It's really very easy. Now I used, um, I used the, I usually you can slice, usually I'll slice so it's not as thick, 
but because these only have a few little pieces, um, it's not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, line it up the best I can here. Hmm. Looks like I didn't, I must have moved a piece when weeding and I didn't realize it. So I'm just going to add uh, one piece at a time since it's not really lined up well. And just add that there. Add this here. And we're done. We have cute little mugs.